Okay. Oh. Okay. And uh, we'll get started. This little light of mine, and I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, and I'm going to let it shine. And this little light of mine, and I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. All in my home, and I'm going to let it shine. All in my heart, and I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. All righty. Good morning. Good morning. The epistle of Paul, the apostle to Titus. But has in due time manifested his word through preaching, which was committed to me according to the commitment commandment of God our Savior to Titus a true son in our common faith grace mercy and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ our Savior qualified elders for this reason I left you in create that you should set in order the things that are lacking and appoint elders in every city as I commanded you if a man is blameless the husband of one wife having faithful children not accused of dissipation or dispense dissipation dissipation yeah oh yep <laughs> yeah or insubordination for a bishop must be blameless as a steward of god not self-willed not quick-tempered not given to wine not violent not greedy for money amen mm-hmm <laughs> That's a good one, yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let us pray. Most kind, gracious Heavenly Father. Father, we come to say, Lord, we love you, we praise you, we worship you, and we thank you. Father, we thank you because as we are celebrating this Christmas season, we are celebrating for a reason. And we are celebrating with thanksgiving in our heart that you kept your promise and gave your only begotten son who would be born of a virgin. And his purpose was to be the sin atonement for humanity. Father, you kept your promise. And he fulfilled his mission. And this we thank you. And then all of us who are believers in you, are grateful and love you in return for your unconditional love. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Reading of the church covenant. Having been led as we believe by the spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our savior and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, we do now in the presence of God, angels, and this assembly most solemnly and joyfully enter into the covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church and the knowledge, holiness, and comfort, to promote its prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worship ordinances, disciplines, and doctrines, to contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the expense of the church, the relief of the poor, and to spread the gospel through all nations. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotion, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances, to walk circumspectively in the world, to be just in our dealings, faithful in our engagements, and exemplary in our deportment, to avoid all tattletaling, backbiting, and excessive anger, to abstain from the sale and use of intoxicating drink as a beverage, and to be zealous in our efforts to advance the kingdom of our Savior. We further engage to watch over one another in brotherly love, to remember each other in prayer, to aid each other in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy and feelings and courtesy and speech, 
to be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation and mindful of the rules of our Savior to secure it without delay. We moreover engage that when we remove from this place, we will as soon as possible unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of the covenant and the principles of God's word. Okay. All righty. That says a lot. We have come to the time of our altar prayer. If you have a prayer request, you can make it known or someone you need to have prayed for. As we go to God in prayer, thanking him, first of all, before we petition him for whatever our request is. To help with this anxiety going on around everybody. To yes, help with this calmness. Yes. Mm -hmm. Any other? I'm praying for my friend, Shelly Houston, who buried her son yesterday. Oh, I'm just praying for her strength mm -hmm. and faith and hope. Yeah, okay. For Duncan Pavel to keep his faith as he goes through this uh sets of you know the one that was in the accident who goes through all these sets of uh operations to let him walk again okay we know god and is ray in. a special prayer for ray to, he's still hanging on to give him strength to just you know feel it feel peace <laughs> okay i'm sorry it's a lot today <laughs> for all of yeah. us actually the whole world we all need it <laughs> yeah okay Dear Heavenly Father, we assemble ourselves around your throne of grace once again. Father, we come to say, Lord, we thank you, we praise you, we worship you, and we adore you. Father, we come making our petitions known for you. There, as some have made their petition known, uh, comfort for bereaved, healing for a sickness or recovery, healing from accidents. Father, we have so much that's going on that, yes, it appears as the whole world is filled with anxiety about a situation that we cannot do anything about. But Father, we know who can, and that is you. There is so many that is suffering from bereavement. There is the Marshall family, there's the Gilmore family, and um, Vaughn's friend and her family. Father, we just know that you are the comforter because you said in your word, you will comfort us. You will not leave us comfortless. And what we know about you is there's truth in your word. And whatever that you said will come to pass. And we thank you for being faithful to your word because not only do we need deliverance from our anxieties, Father, give us your peace as only you can because your peace surpasses all understanding and is your peace that the world cannot give nor does it understand but father we just know that we need a touch from you this morning because there is love in your touch there's healing in your touch there's comfort in your touch there's deliverance in your touch Father, the whole world needs a touch from you, not just the ones that who have made their wishes known, but the whole world needs a touch from you. Because when they touch from you, Father, you will touch the hearts and the minds of men. And whatever wickedness and unrighteousness that's in the heart, when you touch, there will be a change. There will be a spiritual reawakening. They will turn from their wicked ways and then they will turn back to you 
And Father, that's what we're asking for, just a touch from you this morning, Father, because there is no touch like a touch from the Almighty God. And Father, we ask that you just keep us here under the protective armor of your wings because there is protection, there is safety, and there are just, you are our refuge and your protective care. And Father, we thank you for being who you are and caring and protecting us as you do. And when we are suffering from all of these anxiety effects, when we give it to you, as you ask us to, it will be relieved because we will have found peace, love, and joy in you. As you ask us not to worry about what's going on, just give it to you and you'll take care of it. Father, we thank you so much for being God. And we thank you for answering this prayer as we are praying it in the authoritative name of your son, Jesus. Amen and amen. Today's message is the prophesied Christ. And I'm coming out of Isaiah the seventh chapter and the 14th verse. I included Isaiah 9, chapter 9, verses 6 through 7 to close with uh, Christ fulfilling his promise of giving us a savior. So I will read those three verses and it reads as follows, Isaiah 7, 14. The Lord himself shall give you a sign that behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Then to see the fulfillment of that promise is in Isaiah 9, verses six to seven, and they read as follows. For unto you, us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And verse seven reads, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with the judgment with, and with justice from henceforth, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. So, so well, why are you talking about the prophesied Christ? Well, as we prepare to celebrate the Lord, the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, as his birth was foretold by the prophet Isaiah some 750 years before he was born. The message, the foretelling message of the coming of Christ was a message of hope as God the Father had promised to send us a Savior who would atone the sins of the world because the world had become so wicked and God had promised or pronounced the whole world guilty because of sin. And God cannot look on sin, neither will he tolerate sin, but in his own time, he'll bring about justice for, for sin. Therefore, God in his unconditional love for his prized creation, humanity, he would not allow us to remain separated from him because of our sinful condition. So God, 
began, ex began executing his plan of salvation or redemption, if you will. And that was done by sending his only begotten son into the world as man to pay man's sin debt, okay? And God being God always has someone to speak to the people for him. So this is what Isaiah was doing, uh, prophesying, giving the people hope that God's plan of salvation will be in the form of Jesus Christ. And he gave them the assurances of God's promise being fulfilled. The promise he was, he said, now listen, let me show you the promise. Let me show you. Let me give you some assured, uh, confident hope that here's the sign I'm going to give you. He said, a virgin is going to conceive and bear a son and don't call his name will be named Emmanuel. That Emmanuel is God. That name means God with us. And he be known that God keeps his promise. And only God could wrap himself in humanity and be born of a virgin. Okay, who is the God we're talking about? Well, right now, and that's you're talking about the prophesied Christ. But God, Christ is God in the second person. And he was present during creation. And let's just be going to examine who Christ is so we can get a better understanding of how he could come in human form. Well, God, there's three persons in the God here. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And all three of them is present during creation. Okay? So God, Jesus Christ, was going to come through a virgin birth into the world to be the Savior of the world. And how was he going to save the world? It was through and a death on the cross as a sin atonement for man. Remember, the world had been pronounced guilty because of sin. And a righteous God, holy God, cannot and will not look on sin, nor tolerate sin. Okay? So, who is this Christ? He is God, as I just said. And he was present during creation. He was not created as we were, but he is eternal which means he has always had a fellowship with the Father because he is part of the Godhead. He is Alpha and Omega. He has no end nor beginning. And he created all things because John presents Christ as the word of God who became flesh. He is the only begotten of the Father. Because it goes back to what I was just saying, that he being the second person in the Godhead, his purpose and his distinct duties was to be the savior of the world. He would have to come into the world as human, as sinful nature, but he did never sin. He, even though he was born into sin, he never sinned because he is God-man mean that he's both human and divine. The human by way of the virgin birth. Okay? The God, the Holy Spirit is his form. So therefore, being human and divine, and it will require a human sacrifice to please God in order to Father, in order to redeem man from his sinful Sin, pay his sin debt. Let me say that but to pay his sin debt, it would require a human, but he had to be sinless. Jesus Christ met that required. Okay. So, being that he was both God and man, 
and meeting those requirements. Well, you might ask, what was his requirement? What was the father's requirement? He had to have, he had to be sinless. He had to be human. He had to have a relationship to the father. Remember, he had that because he was God, he is God. Then he had to have a relationship to the world. He had that because he created the world. And he had to be human. He had a relationship to humanity because he came in, he was born of a woman. So he met the father's requirement to pay man sin debt. So God makes no mistake. He's all knowing, he's all wise, and he is love. And in his unconditional love for his prized creation, he gave his very best, his very best. He gave all he had to be man's perpetuated. In other words, take on sin when he had no sin. He took on our sin at the cross of Calvary. He gave this because he knew that he was going to have to suffer a humiliating death that he had to endure and all of the suffering that he had to endure on the cross in order to pay our sin debt. We are, th we are blessed and we are thank we should be. And I will step out on a limb and said, all of us who are believers are thankful for Christ paying our sin debt. He did what we could not do. We created the sin. We made sin. We humanity, because sin entered the human race through the disobedience of Adam and Eve, the back there in the Garden of Eve. And each generation, sin has gotten worse and worse and worse. And so when God the Father pronounced the whole world guilty of sin, he implemented his redemptive plan of salvation. And why would he do that? Why would he give all of his, his all to redeem man? It really speaks to his unconditional love, his agape love, that there is no other love that matches God's agape love. Think about it. That he would give all that he had just to redeem, make it personal, just to redeem the low wretched me. So when I believe in Jesus Christ, his son, and accept him as my personal savior, I will live forever in his presence. Think about that. I can't, in accepting Jesus Christ as my personal savior, I have a confident hope that I'm going to live in eternity with him. But there will be joy, there will be peace, there will be shouting, worship, and praise. No more of this pain and anguish and anxiety that we are suffering today. And as Paul said, what we suffer today is pale in comparison to the joy that we will receive one day. All of the aches and pains that our bodies are going through will be no more. Because we have that glorified body like Christ. All the, the tears that we sometimes have to shed because of, for whatever reason, uh, for a wayward child and his wrongdoing would be no more. And think about our own imperfection when we do things against the will of God and how I our father may have shed some tears for our waywardness, but his love superseded all of that because of what he done for us. He told us, I'm going to send you somebody who's going to restore my relationship with you. Yes, it took 42 generations, but for the prophecy to be fulfilled. Nevertheless, the prophecy was fulfilled. And just as that prophecy was fulfilled on the day that we are getting ready to celebrate, 
whatever God promises us will be, will come to pass. That's the hope that we can tank for, we can look for, you know, that is the hope. And we have that confident hope and knowing that God has proven himself to be faithful to whatever he promises. He delivers on his promise. Then when we are looking at God and all of his love and the magnitude of his love and him being all known, we can ask the question, God loved me so that he gave his son knowing that he was going to suffer the pain and the suffering that he did. And he did so willingly. And the son, knowing his mission was to go to the cross, did so willingly. Those are acts of love that we, as recipients of that love, must show unexpressed. I heartfelt thank get thankfulness because and reciprocate and love God in return for what He done. Yeah. We 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 must. There's just no other way around it. How can we show God that we appreciate or we are very appreciative? of him giving his only begotten son that if I believe in him, I will spend eternity with him. Well, number one, we can show that we appreciate him doing it by accepting his son. Then we are to love our fellow man as we love ourselves because we've already shown that we love God. Jesus is God too, you know. Okay, and then when, he, when we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, the God, the Holy Spirit, comes and lives within us. And remember this, God will not live in a dirty house, just as he cannot look on sin. When you mean, what do I mean by when I say a dirty house? When we are still trying to cons uh, live according to the world instead of God. That's when because the world is in direct opposition to God and his righteousness. So when we can cast the world aside and live in total humility and obedience to God and his word, we are showing him, yes, I love you. I have committed myself to do, living a holy life before you. And so the world will see the righteousness of your son in me. Because remember what happened on the cross. Christ took our unrighteousness and gave us his righteousness. That's a great gift. I am no more out of fellowship with the Father. Jesus Christ's death pardoned my sin. He consecrated me back to the Father. And I keep saying me because I want you to make it personal to with each and every one of us. Make it personal. Then it's more meaningful when we are in a mode of thanksgiving to saying, Lord, I thank you for giving your son. I thank you for loving me as you do. Yes, we are celebrating this, this Christmas with a thanks, heart of thanksgiving and appreciation for the gift that the Father gave us. And we see that when verses Isaiah 9 and 6, see 6 and 7, bring forth his only son. Yeah, that prophecy was fulfilled. And I'll reread that verse again. And it says, it's the fulfillment of the promise of the Christ. For unto us a child is born. 
Unto us a son is given. The government shall be on his shoulders. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Now let's just look at that verse. He is, Christ is God, and he's God's only son. And yes, he's wonderful because of the mighty acts that he did. He's a counselor that has all of your problems solved. He has all of your problems solved because he is the mighty God. He is the everlasting and he's the Prince of Peace because he says, my peace I give to you. It's my peace that I leave with you. The world cannot give you the peace that I give because it doesn't understand my peace. Mm -hmm. My peace supersedes all other peace. His peace, and he is the Prince of Peace because of his kindness, his mercifulness, and his compassion. Remember, Christ is God. He is the mercy seat because he took the place of justice. Justice was demanded that we remain separated from the Father, but the Father in his loving kindness said, who will go for us? Who shall we send? The son said, Father, prepare me a body and I will go down and redeem man. Mm -hmm. And redeem man he did. Before we can uh, look at his, birth, his death, we have to look at his birth because he had to be born in order to die. But one thing about it, he didn't stay dead. There's a day coming when we celebrate his resurrection and he rose that morning. And yes, it's nothing but the mighty acts of God. When we look back and say, he promised, he delivered on his promise, and now we have peace. We are at peace with God. And if I want to start to close with these message these things yes he's wonderful as i said who can do anything but fail he provides all of our needs only a wonderful god and as healing he does so with merciful and kindness and when we are in trouble he comes to our rescue amen when he, we are burdens gets too heavy, he takes them on himself. Just like if we are suffering from these anxiety, he'll take them too. Who else but a loving God will suffer like he did for our well-being? Nobody but Jesus. Who else is willing to pay our sin debt? Nobody but Jesus. Who else will carry our boat? Nobody but Jesus. Yes, the prophesied Christ. Just as he came as a newborn baby to redeem man from sin and shame, he's coming back again. This time for the redeemed. He came the first time to redeem. When he come back the second time, He's coming back for the redeemed, us, his bride, mm -hmm. his church. So yes, we have hope. We have hope. Just as the people back in Isaiah's day had hope that Christ would come, we are living in this day. We have hope that not only did he come, he's coming back again for us. And he's coming back take me with him and and I keep saying make it personal each of us he's coming back for us 
This is not a, a message of hope and one of thanksgiving. We celebrate his birth in honor of what God has done for us. It's a message of thanksgiving because we as believers have hope, a confident hope that we will spend eternity in the presence of our Lord and say, what better way to spend our eternity other than in his presence and praise and worship in our long eternal worship. And when we were studying out of the book of Revelation, it was showing you the joyous, never ending praise of worship that would be going on in every nation every kindred, everybody will be there who have made it over and held on to their faith in God will be in that praise and worship service. Yes, we have hope that yes, Christ is going to return for us. And I say again, make it personal. He's coming back for me. And I'm going to be ready to go back with you. Why? Because I'm ready now. I've accepted him as I say. I've continued to work and live in holiness to him. Shining the light of Christ and his righteousness in the world. So the whole world will know. And do not mistake. I am a child of God. I am a follower. Not just a friend. Because when times get rough, a friend will leave. But if you are a follower, you'll stick with him to the end. Regardless of how rough societies can bring. I'm going to stay true to my calling. Yes, we are celebrating the birth of Christ with thanksgiving in anticipation of Christ's return for us. God keeps his promise. Whatever he promised, it will come to bed. Christ was prophesied. He came. And the next promise is he's going to return. He is coming back one day. Will you be ready? So as I close, when we celebrate the birth of Christ, let's do so in the spirit in which it should be of thanksgiving for what he has done and thanksgiving of what he is going to do when he returns. Let us pray. Dear kind Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving your son who gave his life for all who believe. And Father, we thank you that one day our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who redeemed all who believe from his sin and shame, is coming back for his bride. And we will reign with him forever and eternity. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray this prayer. Amen and amen. God be with you. God be with you until we meet again. Amen.